Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on primary ciliary dyskinesia. For introduction, primary ciliary dyskinesia, PCD, also called immodal cilia syndrome, is an inherited disorder, in which there is absent or disordered movement of the cilia, leading to a spectrum of clinical manifestations. This disorder affects approximately 1 in 15,000 to 20,000 live births, although the actual incidence may be higher because of a limited ability to definitively diagnose affected patients. For clinical manifestations, it includes neonatal respiratory distress, chronic cough, chronic nasal congestion, middle ear effusions, chronic pansinusitis, laterality defects like situs inversus, infertility, and bronchiectasis. Cartagner syndrome, the triad of situs inversus, pansinusitis, and bronchiectasis, accounts for approximately 50% of cases. Males are infertile as a result of immodal sperm. And because the cilia fail to beat normally, secretions accumulate in the airways, and endobronchial infection results. Chronic infection, if untreated, leads to bronchiectasis by early adulthood. For diagnostic studies, PCD diagnosis has historically relied on a combination of clinical features and ultrastructural analysis of respiratory cilia by electron microscopy, obtained from scrapings or biopsy of nasal or airway epithelium. Results may be difficult to interpret, as chronic infection and inflammation may also lead to ultrastructural abnormalities in nasal cilia. The most common ultrastructural defect is the absence of dynean arms. A third of affected individuals have normal ciliary ultrastructure. The measurement of nasal nitric oxide has been used as a screening tool for PCD. Low nasal nitric oxide values, less than 77 nanoliter per minute are consistent with PCD. High-speed video microscopy assesses ciliary beat frequency and pattern, but requires specialized equipment. And currently, there is an absence of standardized reporting methods. PCD is generally autosomal recessive. Currently 31 genes have been identified to explain approximately 60% of cases. The association of genetic defects and clinical phenotype is unknown. For treatment, high-resolution chest CT scans are useful to confirm and monitor bronchiectasis. Surveillance cultures help identify organisms involved and guide antibiotic therapy. Sinus surgical procedures are often done to manage chronic sinusitis, but their benefit is questionable. Most children require placement of pressure equalization tubes for management of recurrent otitis media. Chest physiotherapy and prompt treatment of bacterial infections are helpful, but the course of the disease tends to be slowly progressive. Inhaled hypertonic saline may improve cough clearance, and has been shown in the short term to improve lung function. Anti-inflammatory antibiotics, such as low-dose macrolides, may reduce the number of exacerbations per year. That's all for this video. Thank you.